to the uh, Pyramid Lake uh, area. So Emily, would you like to say anything else by way of introduction or shall we just get started for the moment? Um, we can just get on started. Okay, good. And thank you very much for this. This is wonderful. Well, thank you for that introduction. Um, today I'm here on behalf of the Pyramid Lake um, Paiute Tribes Natural Resource Department and I'm going to be talking specifically about the reintroduction of California bighorn sheep to the Pyramid Lake Paiute Reservation. Um, and also, first I'll lead off with a few things that our Natural Resource Department and Fisheries Department has been doing over the last few decades. Um, just give you kind of an introduction to the Pyramid Lake Pite Reservation and the conservation work that's been going on on the reservation for decades. So for many of you who don't know anything about the Pyramid Lake Indian Reservation, it's located about 35, 35 miles northeast of the Reno area. It is the largest reservation in Nevada um, with about 275,000 acres um, and 112 of that is the lake surface. So it takes up a large portion of the reservation. We have the lake range that is just east of Pyramid Lake, the Virginia range. We have the Paras and then the Paras down to the um, south over here. It's a desert terminal lake and it's home to the Kuyui and the Lahontan Cutthroat Trout, which I'll talk about a little bit later. But just to give you a little bit of an overview, the Natural Resource Department has many programs that works to conserve environmental resources on the Pyramid Lake Fight Reservation. We have a Water Resources Department, an air quality, air quality monitoring program. We have a rangeland program, an invasive weed management program, Brownsfield program, aquatic invasive species program, which just got started in 2018, I believe, 2018, 2019. So that's one of our newer programs. Um, we started a recycling program in 2018 to bring recycling to the reservation. We have a water quality program that um, is decades old and we have treatment as state, meaning that we set our own water quality standards for the reservation. So all water that enters Pyramid Lake must meet water quality standards for the preservation of Pyramid Lake and the aquatic life that lives within Pyramid Lake. We also have a wetlands program. We have um, over 22 wetlands throughout the reservation, all the way north to the Smoke Creek Desert um, and along the Lower Truckee River. And in 2018, 2019, we also started a HABS program, which is a harmful algal bloom program where we're monitoring for harmful algal blooms throughout many of the beaches and on both sides of the lake to ensure the public of our health, uh, but the public that recreate um, on the Pyramid Lake Pite Reservation. So moving forward, um, some things about the Pyramid Lake reservation and the conservation that's happening. So there's many species that call their home Pyramid Lake. We have over 235 species of birds, um, five species of amphibians, reptiles. Um, our ungulates include mule deer, pronghorn antelope, and bighorn sheep, of course. Um, our carnivores range from bobcats and mountain lions to raccoons. Um, we have over 14 species of bats, 15 species of birds. So we're quite um, diverse in our um, number of creatures that call Pyramid Lake their home, but specifically our department in the fisheries department, we focus on, um, I guess as a tribe, we focus on five different species. Um, one, they'll hunt and cut their trout as a threatened species. Um, a Kuyui, which is endemic to Pyramid Lake, and it's only found in Pyramid Lake in one other place in the world. It's a sucker fish that lives, can live over 40 years. So it's a very long lived species. And that long lived species allows us to be able to overcome long periods of drought. So it's a pretty hardy sucker fish. Um, we have the American white pelican. So Anahoe Island that is in the middle of Pyramid Lake, that is a national wildlife refuge for the American white pelican. And um, recently we've been starting work um, to conserve the Northern leopard frog. So the Northern leopard frog is found I'm in the Wadsworth area still, and it's the only known population of northern leopard frogs that is known to exist in the Truckee Meadows 
I mean, sorry, the Truckee River corridor. It used to be found all the way from Verdi to Pyramid Lake. And um, the only known population that's left is on Pyramid Lake. So we are studying to understand um, its habitat needs and also working to conserve those wetlands in that river corridor area to make it a sanctuary for the northern leopard frog in the hopes that our work can help repopulate the Truckee River with northern leopard frogs and that one day you'll see them from Verdi all the way down to Pyramid Lake. So that's the goal of our amphibian conservation. And of course, um, we'll get into the California bighorn sheep a little bit later. But I put these graphs on my slide just to show that um, really the health of the biodiversity that is in Pyramid Lake is really tied to Pyramid Lake itself. So you can see on this graph that Derby Dam that was built in the early 1900s. And by 1940, um, Lahontan cutthroat trout were extinct in Pyramid Lake. And in between 1960 and 1970, Kuliui became endangered. So these are the years that the tribe really took action to um, take charge of our fisheries and recover the fisheries. So that's been the main focus of the tribe for decades is to recover its fishery. So to improve the populations of Lahontan cutthroat trout and Kuliui, um, they're both um, very important to tribal members and um, the identity of the Pyramid Lake Bayou tribe. And this graph below is a little outdated, but it's pretty accurate. I checked the elevation of Pyramid Lake this morning and it was at um, 3,807 feet. So um, the last two years of great um, winters we've had have really helped to bring uh, Pyramid Lake up again after severe drought, prolonged drought. So um, right now we're on the upward climb of recovering the um, elevation of the lake, which not only improves habitat for the haunt cutthroat trout and the coyote, but all um, aquatic life within the lake. Um, so I'll move into my main topic today, which is um, bighorn sheep and the recovery on tribal lands. But just to give you a little bit of a background, um, there are six different species of bighorn sheep in North America. So you have the Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep here in the dark blue, and their distribution is from Canada all the way down to New Mexico. Um, and you can kind of see that those follow the, that higher um, elevation areas. Um, in Nevada, we specifically have California bighorn sheep and Nelson Desert bighorn sheep. You can see that Nelson bighorn sheep are more found in the southern portion of Nevada. Um, and then you have three other um, varieties that live more in the Mexico um, panhandle here. So there's quite a diversity in the t um, species, um, but we'll only be speaking about California bighorn sheep moving forward. In Nevada, as a state manages for Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep, California bighorn sheep, as well as desert or Nelson bighorn sheep. All right, so the history of bighorn sheep in North America is that of many species of wildlife that we lost by like the early 1900s, we had lost a lot of our bighorn sheep, which we've seen across different species. Um, in 1850, we had a diverse amount of bighorn sheep throughout the West, but you can tell by the 1960s that we had lost a lot of those populations. But a lot of hard work has been done in that time to recover populations and it's an international effort between Canada, the United States and Mexico to recover um, these animals and these species. So there's a lot of different uh, foundations and state agencies and federal agencies that come together to recover um, bighorn sheep in North America. So specifically in Nevada, um, the earliest record we have, or fossil record we have, is found in the Pinewood Cave, and it's over 20,000 years old. So that's um, found right here where the star is, if you can see my cursor. Um, so um, you can tell that we've done a lot of work to recover, but we also have a long ways to go um, to recover bighorn sheep populations in Nevada as a whole. Okay, so you might ask, you know, why, what are the threats to bighorn sheep and how can we combat those? So as a state, um, we have a lot of different 
topics that can threaten bighorn sheep. So I added, I left over hunting on this graph just to talk about the fact that we lost a lot of our bighorn sheep populations in those early 1800s, 1900s era because of overhunting and what the move, movement west by settlers. So that was thought to really reduce the population of bighorn sheep in Nevada. Um, domestic livestock is a huge issue for bighorn sheep, specifically domestic goats and domestic sheep grazing. So you can see in this uh, graph in the middle here, these are the different grazing BLM grazing allotments in in Nevada for um, domestic sheep and domestic goats. So you can see that this is gonna overlay with a lot of that habitat that is um, conducive to, re to bighorn sheep. So the state and tribal agencies, they have to come together to, to deal with these issues with disease. Um, another issue, um, if you've ever driven by Walker Lake, you've probably experienced the bighorn sheep that are right along the road and that's where you come into like collision mortality and how that affects populations of bighorn sheep. We have a lot of main corridors that run through Nevada and those highways can, um, they can really threaten and fragment habitats. Uh, bighorn sheep are known to select for areas away from roads. So when we have these busy highways, that can be, that can be a real hazard. I also left this map out because it's great to show um, the military and bombing training areas that we have in Nevada. There are a large section of Nevada that the military uses, and that affects not only ha the habitat, but it can affect habitat selection by bighorn sheep. And then other things like climate change, urban development, herbicides and insecticides, they all affect the distribution of bighorn sheep and ability for them to compete um, in these areas for resources. All right, so state of Nevada current conditions. This is um, a figure brought to you by the Nevada Department of Wildlife and it shows areas that they have reintroduced bighorn sheep where they're at their potential, where they are less than at optimal densities in areas that are occupied and at optimum densities. So you can see that there are areas, we have very few areas in the northern portion uh, in central Nevada where bighorn sheep are at their optimal densities. But we also have a lot of opportunity to improve the amount of bighorn sheep that we have on our landscape. And as the Nevada State Mammal, it's really important, I think, for Nevadans to, to educate themselves on uh, bighorn sheep conservation throughout the state. And Nevada has one of the most successful programs for reintroduction in the entire country. So they're doing, the state agencies are doing a lot of great work to improve habitat conditions and also um, work on translocation that I'll talk about now, just like we did on the Pyramid Lake by Reservation. So on January 13th, to 2020, we introduced um, 17 ewes and four rams to the Pyramid Lake Paiute Reservation. They came from the Sheep Creek Range in central Nevada. Um, they were equipped with 14 GPS collars. The yearlings did not have collars. Um, they were sampled for pathogens before. They were looked over by veterinarians. And we tried to collect as much data as we can while we have the animals and also making sure that they're as stress-free as possible throughout this entire process. Because it is a very long process and the Sheep Creek Range is about four hours from Pyramid Lake. So they had about a four hour trailer ride. But this was the first reintroduction of bighorn sheep to tribal lands in Nevada. So not only was it great for the Pyramid Lake Bayou tribe to have bighorn sheep back on the reservation again in their historic range, it was also great for all tribes of Nevada to see bighorn sheep back on tribal land again. So why did we reintroduce them to the Lake Range? The Lake Range is fantastic bighorn sheep habitat. It peaks at 8,172 feet um, above sea level at Tehokam, at Tehokam Peak. Um, it has very high ruggedness, so it has a lot of Rocky cliff habitat, that's great for escape cover for these animals to escape predators. 
There is an abundance of wetlands and springs and riparian corridors that run off of these mountains. And it's also a very large area, about 160 acres. So, and most of that, three fourths of that is on the Pyramid Lake Paiute Reservation. And all of that on the Pyramid Lake Paiute Reservation is undeveloped. So there's very little roads in those areas. It has strict public access, meaning that the public is no longer allowed on the east side of the lake. Um, only tribal members are allowed in these areas. Um, and we also have a wilderness area up in the northern portion of the lake range. And we also conduct feral horse management to make sure that the range is in the best condition that it can be for the our native wildlife. So I know that these graphs are really messy and you might have a lot of questions about them. But this is basically their entire exploratory movement between the day that we released them till yesterday. So I downloaded this today to get the most up-to-date information that I could share with you. The graph on the right just shows you the distribution of their movement um, throughout time. So this is January up till yesterday. And then the second um, figure in the center is a cluster analysis that shows you where are the majority of these GPS locations at. So you can see um, closer to the release area, you have a lot more um, overlapping GPS points. So you have 1,555 here, but you only have 11 up here. So there's very little exploratory behavior compared to habitat utilization down here. So moving forward and looking to the future, we're really trying to understand what is their initial explore, exploring ha um, behavior? Where, where the, what areas are they utilizing and what areas are they attracted to? Um, we are recently starting to look uh, at um, lambing habitats. So um, we're doing lamb counts and figuring out not only how many lambs we have on the landscape, but what habitat are these ewes using to raise their um, lambs in? And moving into the fall, we'll be looking at breeding habitat, and then how does that change over time for seasonal, seasonal habitat selection? This will not only will um, help the tribe better manage the species into the future, it will also help um, other managers, other tribes, and other state agencies um, improve bighorn sheep reintroduction um, long term. So um, we're also looking at how these bighorn sheep are utilizing burned versus unburned areas. So as many as you know, um, in northern Nevada, we've had a lot of wildfires. So I've been with the Pyramid Lake Paiute tribe now for about five years, and I've seen every mountain range on the reservation burn at some point. So um, some of them are in different stages of recovery and seeing this landscape recover while also being able to um, support native wildlife is great. The lake range burnt in 2017 and also in 2013 and we're just starting to see those native grasses come back um, in, in the higher elevations. So that's great. Um, so the research components of this include vet retrieval, which is um, looking at birth sites, um, where are these bighorn sheep having their, having their lambs. We're also doing vegetation surveys to look at nutrition um, and plant density throughout the lake range. Um, we're doing surveys on a weekly basis to um, do lamb counts, which is visual encounter surveys. We'll also be doing uh, fecal nitrogen analysis, which is basically collecting feces um, and running them in the lab to see what is their um, nutrient ratios, so nitrogen and um, all the different nutrients that are in plants. And we're getting 12 GPS locations a day on our animals, so we will know where they're at every two hours on the landscape, which allows us to really start to tease out um, habitat selection and what's what are the better areas for the bighorn sheep in the lake range? So I would be uh, remiss if I did not mention my partners in this program. So the Nevada Department of Wildlife, Tribe could not have done this without the Nevada Department of Wildlife. Um, 
Corporation and Expertise, the University of Nevada, Reno, um, Nevada Bighorns Unlimited, Nevada Wildlife Record Book Foundation, and of course, Fish and Wildlife Services for providing us funding with um, Tribal Wildlife Grant. So altogether, this project started in 2018 and um, culminated with the release of 21 bighorn sheep in January of 2020. And it will take um, three to five years for us to see um, populations start to stabilize. So we'll be monitoring them um, very closely throughout you know, the next few years to really help them take off and then uh, let them live their lives. Um, so I can now take any questions that anybody has or if there is something that we wanna dive in a little deeper on, we've got plenty of time. Thank you very much, Emily. Um, I personally am just sort of astounded at uh, um, what it takes to put on a project like this and the level of um, of, of uh, particip uh, uh, group participation and partner participation and, and funds that it takes to do it. So um, that it's, it was, it, you said it was uh, several years in the making to, to do this, but could you answer a couple questions and I'll go straight to the other questions about um, uh, how long it's been since um, bighorn sheep have, uh, have been in this area? And um, what, uh, what were the choices that you guys made in terms of uh, where to go and, uh, and find the bighorn sheep that you re rehabilitated or rehabilitated? Okay, yeah, I can definitely answer that question. And if I don't answer it completely, remind me what I forgot. <laughs> but, um, so this isn't a new topic. Um, the Nevada Department of Wildlife has approached the tribe in the mid 80s on bringing bighorn sheep back to the lake range and it wasn't something that the tribe was interested in doing at the time and our natural resource department has really built its capacity over the years and now i think it was really the time where we had the capacity to take on such a large-scale project because like you said it's not only um, partner heavy, it's not only funding heavy, it's time heavy, it's staff heavy, and it's taking on something that could take a decade to get off the ground. So um, we kind of came to the point where the tribes, Tribal Council supported it, and the Natural Resource Department also had the capacity to take on that project and had the staff to execute it. Originally, these sheep were supposed to come from the Black Rock Range. Um, obviously, that's a lot closer than the Sheep Creek Range, as many of you know. Um, however, a storm the day before pushed us out of the Black Rock Range and moved us to the Sheep Creek Range. So the Nevada Department of Wildlife already wanted to move some of those sheep off the Sheep Creek Range. Uh, and just so happened that we were doing a translocation so it worked out great and then um they kind of just switched plans around at the last minute um the sheep creek range is close to a domestic sheep grazing allotment so the department of wildlife have to manage for populations that don't disperse if a population gets too dense it will disperse into neighboring mountain ranges and the threat of that is disease so if a ram decides to go hang out with some domestic sheep and then come back it can it can mean that pneumonia can spread throughout that entire herd ah okay so that is something that they plan and manage for as a state agency um the sheep creek range um, just worked out for the climatic conditions of that storm that day. So um, that's why we chose the Sheep Creek Range. Um, it's, as a management decision, always best to move sheep from an area that is have similar habitat so that they uh, can adapt faster and be more successful. So the Black Rock Range was the most similar and close in geographic location to get the animals from being captured via helicopter neck gun technique to out of the trailer as fast as possible. 
So um, that's always the number one goal is the health and well welfare of these animals. So um, that was really kind of the management decision there in wanting to go closer, but unfortunately that wasn't an option for January weather in Northern Nevada. So that's why we moved to the Sheep Creek Range. It, it sounded like that was some really quick uh, adaptive thinking. I was really, really impressed by that. Um, yeah. I know that you wanted to uh, have your screen off uh, during the presentation to not distract uh, people from uh, the screens themselves or the, the, uh, the, the data itself, but would you be willing by popular demand to uh, turn your yeah. video camera back on? <laughs> I also have a video to show as well. Oh, okay, okay. All right there. Brought to you from Reno, Nevada. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, I had a question uh, that, uh, uh, I, I'll try to draw this in with a, a question that RC had and a question that I also had is uh, two parts. What is the optimum population for the bighorn sheep that have been reintroduced? That's a pretty um, long-winded question, but I will just generalize in saying that it'll take three to five years to reach a, a population if we augment, which means if we bring in some more animals um from a different range which the whole thought of that is to improve genetic variants and improve their fitness overall and that'll take three to five years and the thought is anywhere from a hundred to um 200 individuals but that's that's hard to nail down because you, when you're talking about wildlife you're talking about an animal that doesn't know jurisdictional boundaries so as you can see on my slide here, a lot of those areas to the north are not Pyramid Lake Reservation. So as those populations continue to expand and reach more sustainable numbers, you're gonna see them start moving um, back, you know, north into those, uh, that Fox Range and um, see more exploratory behavior, maybe even across Winnemucca Lake, you, you never know where they're gonna that end up, I mean, this um, movement up here, if you can see my cursor, was probably like 13 days, I wanna say, after the initial release. We had a ram walk all the way around this USGS, USGS station and then come all the way back. So, um, you never know what they're gonna do and where they're gonna go, but uh, we're gonna manage for them to be at a sustainable population and then um, work towards keeping them below their carrying capacity, but above uh, maximum sustainable yield, which is what it's referred to. So we will um, allow eventually for tribal harvest of um, bighorn sheep once they reach MSY, which is maximum sustainable yield. Okay, tribal harvest. So that's a, a question. I, I first uh, heard about this project uh, through an article uh, in High Country News. And um, I'm gonna be quoting from the, from, from the High Country News where um, that there was a comment made about a native management uh, uh, style. And I wanted to ask you what, uh, what that might mean in terms of how it might differ from different sorts of management styles that we see in, in uh, um contemporary um that will really be teased out throughout the rest of this year and how we're going to do that is that we are establishing what we're calling a bighorn sheep working group which um composes of natural resource staff endow staff um tribal members council members and um people from different departments to bring in cultural components and also um, have more community input in how we want to manage this resource because it is a tribal resource and it will be managed based on how the tribe sees fit um, to manage that resource. So I can't speak to specifics on that, but that will be more teased out throughout the rest of this year. And then moving into 2020, we'll have, I mean 2021, we'll have a Bighorn Sheep Management Plan that is comprehensive and talks through um, all the different components that have been laid out by the group. 
Okay. So, um, uh, and this is a question that comes from, uh, from uh, RC. It's more of a statement, but I'm going to read it out loud so I don't uh, um, incorrectly paraphrase. I'm concerned about how the Fallon NAS expansion NEPA process more or less gave, way, gave no consideration to public comments. Um, they went with their desired alternative with no changes whatsoever, even after groups like mine brought issues like wildlife conservation to their attention. Um, I would say that the Pyramid Lake Paiute Tribe also um, participated in that public comment period. And I think that we got the same results. So um, yeah, their expansion, I mean, all over Nevada, I mean, you can see that, that that graph I showed you, that's old. So if that increases, you're looking at a larger portion of Nevada. And even if you overlay this map with the, the map of where populations of bighorn sheep in Nevada are at their optimum um, population density, it's in those areas. Um, but the federal government, so what are you gonna do? <laughs> um, I, another question, I think uh, maybe a little lighter is, uh, do you lead tours to view them? Is there an opportunity for, uh, for people to follow? Um, what's going on with the bighorn sheep? Um, so there'll be public, uh, public presentations similar to this, but um, hopefully in person someday <laughs> and we'll be sharing that information and when we get back to work we'll probably be putting it on our tribal website um my goal is that someday if boaters and recreators on pyramid lake can see them from the lake and be able to participate in ecotourism in that way um so far it's taken an entire day of hiking to get to where they're at so they're not kind of on that Hell's Kitchen area quite yet, but I think as their population densities um, increase, you'll start having more um, sightings of them. Just like in 2013, oh no, it's 2003, when the Nevada Department of Wildlife reintroduced them to the Virginia range, it took, I wouldn't wanna say like seven or eight years before they were seen in Sutcliffe. So um, that was, then those are in pretty low quantities. And now you can see them like, I would say once a year, I'll, I'll see them in the Sutcliff area, just when I'm driving awesome. to the fisheries department. So as their populations grow, I think there'll be more opportunities to see them from the lake. Um, whether there's something more formal put together for ecotourism in that way, um, that'll pan out over, over the years and it'll be up to the tribal council at the time if they want to pursue that for economic development. Okay. Uh, another question, does the tribe graze domestic sheep in the lake range? And if so, how do they avoid disease tram transmission between domestic sheep and the bighorn sheep? Um, the Pyramid Lake Paiute tribe does not graze um, domestic sheep anywhere in the reservation. So only cattle are grazed on the reservation and they don't have any cross contamination of um, diseases that would impact the bighorn sheep or impact the cattle. Okay, okay. Um, how long is your film? I, we have about 20 minutes and I certainly do not want to cut out any other time that we might view this, but I also don't want to, uh, to end a good discussion. So, um, um, not very long. It's just them coming out of the trailer. So I'll play that. And then, um, I also want to say that as part of this project, um, and partnership with the Nevada Department of Wildlife, they're doing a documentary film on the Nevada Department of Wildlife and their game division. Uh, I think it's supposed to air this summer on Animal Planet. I don't think it probably will. I think it'll probably be this fall. So I would stay tuned to that to learn more about what Nevada Department is doing. Nevada Department of Wildlife is doing to conserve um, wildlife throughout the state, um, and also highlights this project as well. That's wonderful. I'll probably um, ask that maybe you can share that with us if you ever have any more. You can share it with me and I will make sure that I share it with our partner groups and our, our members and supporters too. All right, I will play this video.
That's it. <laughs> well, they moved a lot faster in the first video I saw. <laughs> but I have to tell you, I even just even from that, I can get a sense of what um, what an extraordinary moment and how exciting that must have been to see. Um, I understand that of the 21, um, many of them were ewes and pregnant. Yes. So, so um, we had four rams initially. We had one mortality um, with a ram. I want to say a week or two after the release, maybe a week. Um, and all the ewes were pregnant. And as of last Friday, I got my eyes on four three-week-old lambs. So um, now that they're starting to have lambs, they will form what's called a nursing group where the ewes um, come together and basically raise their babies together. And so now that they're more clustered up, I go and find well, the technique is to go and find their groups and then hopefully get a glimpse of the babies. And then I can tell based on their size generically how old they are. So we want to look at um, how many lambs were born. And then in the, in the winter, um, we'll do another count. So how many survived um, that initial year. Um, Hopeful to get some eyes this week or next week on them. Um, the way bighorn sheep um, behave sometimes, they will have the old, one or two older ewes watch the babies while the others go get food um, or find better um, habitat. So sometimes you're chasing the ones that don't have the babies. So then you have to go find the ones that <laughs> That's interesting. That's totally interesting. Can you tell me, um, this is more like a, a softball question, I apologize, but what has been something that's really just sort of surprised in, uh, uh, you about this whole process? Something you didn't expect and, and has uh, maybe even changed the way you think about things? Um, just the, I mean, you think, okay, bighorn sheep, they hang out on rocky cliff sides, pipe in the mountains. But as a human being, to have to get from the bottom of that mountain over the top and find them, <laughs> and the, the grace that they can move with and the speed is immaculate. And as somebody who grew up hunting their whole life, bighorn sheep are an entirely different ungulate than pronghorn antelope and mule deer. And they behave so differently. And I think what was surprising to me is that everything that I have learned over my lifetime was not enough to understand how they're thinking and their thought process behind habitat selection. Um, rams, they tend to be less predictable than ewes, and I was prepared for that. But even some of the ha select habitat selections of the ewes have been very surprising to me. So I've been tracking them pretty much every day. I'm on my computer, seeing where they've at, where they've gone, comparing to that to where they've gone before. Um, the technology that we have these days to be able to monitor these, these animals is incredibly powerful. To be able to get 12 points a day, every two hours, um, morning, noon, and night. Also to be able to track their birth sites is very, important. I mean, 10 years ago, this wasn't possible. I mean, you have VHF, but then you'd have to go out and find them with your telemetry equipment. So to have these GPS collars that are so powerful, and also I should say that these collars are going to be on them for two and a half years. So they have a timer on them. And in two, uh, two years and three months, they fall off. Oh, and interesting. I have two months basically to go get them before their batteries die. And then they're lost to wherever they were at. Um, 
so that's new technology and in our choice of collars we went with the drop-offs because we believe that they're more humane why wear this heavy necklace that you're going to have to wear your whole life if we're not going to gain any scientific information from it because not only is this helping us learn about bighorn sheep overall it's also helping the tribe better manage this resource so what i hope out of this project is that other tribes throughout the state and throughout the country can learn from what we've done and build on what other tribes have done um, the taos pueblo in new mexico has a incredible program for bighorn sheep mm -hmm. and they are mountains and miles above where we're at now, but they started where we're at now. So um, we're hoping that one day our program will be as successful as theirs. And it's successful of this, as the state of Nevada's program overall. So we're hoping to use it as a demonstration project to learn from. And um, this data will be owned by the tribe and uh, we can use it and look at um, different things over time if we if we think that we want to do another study on something else or another wildlife program we'll have that other baseline data to compare it to so you you're uh, the pyramid lake Paiute tribe has already had three amazing successes with the the Lahontan cutthroat trout and um, I do not pronounce it well apologize in advance the Kui and now with the bighorn sheep I, I think it's amazing is there another species diversity that you would like to see maybe personal or just from a, a point of view of the, the tribe as a whole um I think that from well also from my perspective um, I won't speak for the tribe as a whole but um, I think that as someone who has grown up traditionally harvesting wildlife for um, traditional uses, uh, I would like to see that we have um, higher densities of mule deer and pronghorn throughout the reservation and really throughout northern Nevada in general. We have areas where they're doing really great. Um, we have areas I think they can improve on and approve on their um, habitat could be improved on. I think that we're gonna have a long, hard stretch with this fire cycle that we're in and really, sorry, um, trying to have the vegetation and environmental conditions that are conducive to wildlife, native wildlife expansion um, or population expansion. Um, so that's been a real challenge of the Pyramid Lake Natural Resource Department is just dealing with wildfire after wildfire after wildfire for numerous years in a row and just all of the work that it takes after that fire has gone through there to stabilize stream banks, to stabilize soil, to combat invasive species on a thousand acres at a time. Um, it's a challenge that the entire West Coast is dealing with. It's not specifically a Pyramid Lake problem, but I think we're going to have to do as a country and as a tribe a lot of vegetation work if we're going to want to see larger densities of native species in these areas. Yeah, that was profound. Um, that, that actually brought up an interesting question that I, I, I uh, hope I can articulate, but I, I uh, remember seeing a, um, a rather interesting documentary um, called uh, How Wolves Change Rivers, which was about how the introduction of a new, new species um, can change whole ecosystems. Have you seen any bit of that? Uh, maybe the apex predators or just uh, changing grazing? Maybe um, mitigating invasive species. I don't honestly know how to answer that question. Um, <laughs> we haven't had any large predation events um, or any predation events at all in this project. I um, That's inevitable. So um, we're hoping that as this population of bighorn sheep is new, that we're not gonna see large predation events and that um, if they can have a few years to multiply before we start having those mm -hmm. and predator, apex predators are very important in the ecosystem and in that documentary i'm pretty sure you're talking is it about yellowstone yes yeah yeah 
So the removal of wolves changed the behavior of the elk populations. Mm -hmm. So without those predators to push the elk out of those riparian corridors, the elk just grazed uncontrollably, mm -hmm. which in turn impacted the riparian corridor um, in the stream. So they were saying that the return of the wolf to Yellowstone allowed for these riparian corridors to recover because it was pushing the elk the way a natural system does. Mm -hmm. So predators, apex predators, are very important in any ecosystem. Um, they may be something that I'm a little nervous about right now with this project because it, there is so few. Mm -hmm. um, but what the tribe, when we put this project forward, in 2017, there was a roundup of horses on the reservation on that lake range. Um, and that allowed for some of these areas that had been really damaged and hit hard in the springs to recover. So they had three years to recover. And I have been in some areas where they've been burned, areas that I had seen springs just hammered three years ago, and you can see that recovery. Uh, so moving forward, I see um, this ecosystem working together. I don't see any issues, large scale issues with apex predators or um, really over competing for resources in this area. I mean, there's an abundance of springs and habitat for, for native wildlife to live. Um, I guess, and thrive. And even in those areas that we have cattle, I mean, they both of these operations can coexist and be managed together. That, that was wonderful that you segued into that because that was a question. Um, how do cattle ranges or, uh, impact will wildlife uh, uh, reintroduction? Is there, um, uh, I know that you kind of touched upon it that uh, that contact with with other sheep and cattle can also be transmittal for disease as well, or is there any other risks that you see in terms of of the sharing of rangeland? Um, as far as the sharing of rangeland, um, cattle operation is a way of life and it's a business, and it's something that a lot of tribal members participate in, and it's. Um, economic development. So mm -hmm. it's and it's a tradition. So I don't foresee any issues with over competing for any resources. These bighorn sheep are selecting for high rugged terrain. And that while there is overlap in where they're selecting for these areas, the primary areas that these bighorn sheep are going to be staying for a majority of their life is going to be areas that the cattle aren't in. Right. Right. So there'll be overlap, but it won't be hard competition for resources. Right. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, do we have any other questions? I have one last question. I was really fascinated with the petroglyphs. Uh, and um, uh, so can you, do you, um, it's not your area of specialty, I'm sh uh, but would you be able to say anything about how long bighorn sheep have been important to um, uh, Paiute tribes and uh, where else you see uh, um, uh, examples of, of uh, bighorn sheep in this area historically? I don't know if our petroglyphs have depictions of bighorn sheep on them. I'm not privy to that information. Um, but there are petroglyphs throughout Nevada that depict bighorn sheep, and they're thought to be one of the most abundant ungulates throughout Nevada at one point. And I think I missed this question earlier in saying that big, the last recorded herd or established population on the lake range was mm -hmm. John C. Fremont in the late 1900s that was recorded when he came through Pyramid Lake. Um, there's been sightings over the years of one or two or three individuals in the lake range, the northern portion, um, or the eastern portion, but never an established population. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so we are kind of winding down a little bit. We still have time for a few more questions, but I know that uh, something that I would like to know, and I'm sure that a lot of other people would, is how can we uh, support or um, get the word out about some of the great works that uh, the Pyramid Lake uh, um, tribes are doing, or particularly the Natural Resource Department is working on? Um, well, we have a lot of information on our website. Um... But if anybody ever wants somebody to speak at um, an event on a specific topic, if they're whether they're doing something with water or wildlife or just environmental conservation or um, even um, a lot of things that we do as we go into the Pyramid Lake High School, we talk about our projects and then we connect that to career opportunities to really encourage the next generation of tribal members to really hold natural resource careers in their mind as they're moving forward in their lives to think that that could be a possibility. So we always wanna foster that and teach kids about environmental conservation. So um, you can reach out to the natural resource department or me or our director, or you could call um, just the natural resource department and ask somebody, hey, I want, you know, got a fifth grade class, I would love for you to give a presentation or we're having this event and we want to know would the natural resource department like to be involved in that and depending on the availability of staff or the topic um we're really open in being involved in different things that are happening um throughout northern nevada um as it portrays the natural resource conservation because what we're doing on the reservation is not unique other reservations are doing just the great work um all over nevada all over the country so we're not an isolated um example of tribal wildlife conservation in, in under any means mm -hmm. we're just one reservation working to conserve our natural resources very humble <laughs> Um, I still remain really impressed with what you guys are doing, and I've also heard really fabulous things about your high school and uh, and some of the courses and and the direction the high school is taking in terms of of um, kind of uh, of traditional um, programs and and such. And I don't want to make you an expert on all things, but if you wanted to say something about that, I personally would not stop you. <laughs> um, well, we work really closely with the cultural program at Pyramid Lake High School. So um, Teresa Wright, our cultural teacher, she's amazing. And she participates in pretty much everything that we throw at her as far as like what we're doing, whether it be water quality or projects like this and educating because natural resources is cultural conservation. The nat preserving Pyramid Lake and preserving the natural resources at Pyramid Lake is really closely tied with preserving, preserving cultural to traditions. Not only um, for this project is the preservation of the harvest of native wildlife. And water quality is the preservation of not only Pyramid Lake, but Lahan Katarachau and Kuiyui and um, the Northern Leopard Frog. So they're all closely tied together and we always try to bring it kind of full circle when we're having those conversations with students so that they can tie cultural preservation of cultural traditions to the conservation of natural resources. Um, we also um, work with the Natchez School as well in Wadsworth. So we'll do um, presentations to elementary school students um, on what we're doing and, you know, Earth Day events and, you know, common things for just education overall. And we participate every year in, Chuck, what is it, um, Snapshot Day which is um, an event that happens from Pyramid all the way to Tahoe, where people come together and they take water quality samples. So it's a, a snapshot in time of the Truckee River from top to bottom. Oh, interesting, interesting. I'd like to hear more about those results sometime about, uh, and do they publish the results? Uh, um, End up does it, I don't know. Nevada Department of Environmental Protection. Mm -hmm. That's the well, event. I think we are just about out of time. 
but I once again want to tell you how, um, again, impressed in, at uh, this project. And uh, watching the videos was stunning and hearing you talk in depth about it and seeing your presentation was really meaningful for us. So Emily, thank you so much for doing this. Um, you're very welcome. If anybody has any comments or questions, my email address is right here on the screen. So if you wanna write it down, um, feel free to shoot me an email with questions or comments or opportunities um, for col collaboration, um, et cetera. That's wonderful. And I'll make sure that that goes out on, onto our, our sites as well too. So thank you and good night. I hope you uh, 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 check in on some of the other programs too. Okay. All right, well, thank you and have a great um, rest of your virtual Black Rock Rendezvous. <laughs> Thanks.